Uh, let's go to the Calgary Stampeders. Yeah. I have a couple for the Stampeders. And they all kind of come back to, we have for a decade just said, yeah, they'll fill that hole, they'll be fine. They'll fill that hole, they'll be fine. And for the most part, they've filled that hole and they'll, they've been fine. They weren't in 2019. They were not great in 2019. So I, I don't know if my bigger question is going to be uh, within the wide receiver core, or it's probably, honestly, it's probably in the offensive line core and the interior offensive line is the one I want to see because you're, you're having to replace, I know Brad Erdos didn't play in 2019. Very good. Shane Bergman, I thought was a fantastic left tackle. I, I weep for the CFL that he's gone a little bit because he was so nice in there, but they're already replacing both tackles or at least pushing Cassitati out there full time. And now they have to replace both their guards as well. Sean McEwen comes in, great. But can Justin Lawrence and Ryan Seaver make that work is, is my biggest question. Bo can handle a lot of things, right? Bo could be standing on Deerfoot Trail in high-speed rush hour and be like, yeah, this is fine. Uh, there's Kamar. We're good. But that doesn't go on forever. Just because Bo can maneuver his way out of the pocket, throw the ball away, no loss at second and 10, let's go get him you don't want to play that way. That doesn't help you get the ball to Kamar Jordan, to Mark Heath Ambles and Josh Huff. So uh, interior offensive line, can they fill in what are two pretty big gaps in my mind is my question. Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to go interior offensive line. So I will make up a one big question on the fly here for the Calgary Stampers. I actually haven't looked at when they play Toronto, but my on the fly Ooh. one big question here is how does oh, that – one. Oh, is it really week one that they started out with it? Okay. Um, Cause I didn't have a chance to dive into the full schedule of every team, but yeah, the, if it's Calgary, Toronto week one, my question is with, and we see this so much in collegiate football where somebody goes from Alabama to Auburn or jumps over from, uh, you know, I say Florida to Georgia, something like that for coaching staff. And they know them mm. inside out and they get a chance to really pick away at what they know. And they know the terminology and they know the hand signals and they, and Nick Arbuckle is going to have the advantage going into that game of understanding exactly what Calgary does, not just because he was there, but because his head coach Ryan Dinwiddie was there. So having those guys with again, Juwan Briskason and Varus Daniels and all the rest, how much, given all of the advantages of understanding what they're going up against, how much can they produce? Because it might be a bit of a fallacy. They might go into that game and show it like crazy, and then when they don't have those advantages, they come crashing back to earth. But my, my problem here is I wonder if they go into that game, they have those advantages, they have all this preparation time, and then they get to the game and they just don't execute. How much is that going to show? Oh, okay, there's that first little tiny crack in the Argo system that we were talking about where they've got all this talent and we'll see where it goes in-house. But you wonder what Calgary versus Toronto is going to look like, really look like, because I think there's going to be a whole lot of the last second as the receivers are wag waggling towards the line of scrimmage adjustments and people yelling things and coaches recognizing stuff. And there's going to be a lot of snap decisions made in that game because there's going to be a lot of the eye recognition of the people that have been on either side of that battle that they're going to see stuff and try to take advantage of it. Yeah. Just looking at this roster, Calgary suffered personnel losses, ultimately went negative defensive backfield. Uh, they had Jameer Thurman linebackers are fantastic losses on the defensive line, losses on the offensive line in the receiving core and at running back. And you go, I, I get it. I get Calgary is awesome. I get Huffnagel is a god. I get Dave Dickinson does an incredible job. At some point, it is too much. It, when, when your lead rusher is Falerin Arimalade, who we really haven't seen play much in the CFL because he got hurt in preseason in 19, that Calgary is going to be four or five for me in the West when we eventually pick who's going to finish where just, just because there's, there's a point where you've lost too much, or in this case, Toronto has traded for and taken it all right. Mm -hmm. Toronto did a great job getting guys from there. 